Time for everybody's favorite end of the month video. What I watched this month, August edition. Started off the month strong with Captain America the Winter Soldier. No matter what way you look at it, it came out the same year as another very, very popular action movie, John Wick. I think this is some of the best modern action period. I think it still holds up to today's action. I really, really love this movie, and I would give it a 9.5 out of 10. It's, it, it's that good. I think, in my opinion, it's the best Marvel movie that exists. Let's move on. Then I watched Cool Runnings in honor of the Olympics, and I forgot how good this movie was. I've heard some people call this really, really predictable, almost like too predictable of a sports movie, but it's fun, it's inspiring, and it's a great story. I really liked it, and I would personally give it an 8 out of 10. Next up, I watched Sicario. This has been on my watch list for a little over a year now, and I'm not gonna lie, this was a beautifully shot film, this was a really, really well acted film, but I feel like this film was trying to make comments on a particular type of violence. Uh, if you have seen Sicario, you know what I'm talking about, specifically gang violence, but I just, this movie feels scared to actually say anything, in my opinion. Like, obviously, there is an overarching narrative throughout this story, but I just felt that this movie was lacking a lot in terms of, for one, character growth throughout the movie. And that's one of the reasons why I would personally be inclined to give it a 5 out of 10. Next up, I watched 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. And I'm not gonna lie, this was better than I thought it was gonna be, but I do still think the book was better than the movie. This is based off a book. This has also been on my watch list for a little over a year. And it was good, but not amazing. I think there was some good action. I think there were some very, very tense moments. Like there's one moment in particular in the movie that is like on par with some of the most tense moments in a movie that I've ever seen before. Just the lighting, the pacing of the scene, and the acting all combine to make a really, really tense scene. It's really, really great. The movie itself um, especially seemed to drag. I personally think it could have stood from probably about 20 minutes being cut. It felt quite slow especially getting into things at the start of the movie, it felt quite slow. There were also a couple moments where it was like, it was quite literally, oh, I'm sure they'll come back to that later, and they just literally never mention it again. <laughs> like, there were a couple moments like that. Still a good movie, but not amazing. I'd be inclined to give it a 6 out of 10 overall. Next up, I watched Trap. And this is actually, I don't think I ever made a short on Trap, which is a shame. I thought Trap was going to be a lot worse than it was. It actually really, really surprised me. I really enjoyed it. I think the film had an absolutely incredible acting, especially from Josh Harnett. I think that there's a tipping point in this film that made it really, really interesting. Every, like everything after the tipping point definitely leave in for certain, but I think probably five minutes could have been cut from the start of the movie because it was yet again like i mentioned in the 13 hours segment it felt like it was like oh they're gonna come back to that right and then it was like oh well well no no they're just, they're not gonna come back to that at all what you thought they were gonna come back to it so that was funny i think this was a really really good m night Shyamalan film of all of his films that i have seen I would say this is my second favorite. I think it's just a really good, fun thriller that takes the material it's given and runs with it. Next, I watched Avengers Infinity War. There are plot holes, yes. There are things wrong with it, yes. There are a lot of characters to keep up with, yes. But dadgummit, this is just great 
fiction, and you're going to hear a little bit more about this in an upcoming review in probably two or three films, but I would give this an 8 out of 10. Let's move on. Then I watched Nobody, and I'm not going to lie, this is the most, and this is going to sound like an insult, and I promise I don't necessarily mean it this way, but this was the most just middle-of-the-road average movie that I've seen in a very, very long time. Pretty much all I remember from this movie is, give me the bleep 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 kitty cat bracelet, you bleep bleep. I thought that was funny, but other than that, like, this movie just very obviously felt like I mean, it was. It's by the studio that made John Wick. It, it felt like a very John Wick ripoff movie, more so than others, I would say. It struggled to stand on its own feet. It honestly depends on the day what I would rate this. Some days, if I was feeling harsher, I'd probably give this a 5 out of 10. Some days, I'd probably give this a 6 out of 10. Next up, I watched Unbreakable, and ooh boy! I really enjoyed this. Uh, I haven't, or I hadn't seen this film in quite a while. I think in probably four years. It holds up. It is really, really good. It's a lot of people say that it's slow and that it's slow burning, and I agree. It is a slow movie, but it is not a boring movie. I think a movie can be slow and be very, very effective. Slowly build up to what it's building to, without being boring. This movie wasn't boring at all. I did forget how abrupt the ending was. I thought, like, while I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is a five-star film. Oh, this is a five-star film. Like, I'm gonna rate this thing five stars. It's gonna be sick. Uh, but I forgot how abrupt the ending is. It's, uh, it's relatively rough how abrupt the ending of this film is. Then I watched The Bike Riders, and this is a movie that drew me in surprisingly well. Like, the first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie, I wasn't really compelled by. I wasn't connecting to any of the characters. I wasn't really um, caring that much about the movie. But at about the 15 minute mark, I was like, oh. Oh, it started clicking and it started meshing. This was a very, very stylized film. It stylizes, I believe it's set in the 50s and 60s, does that very, very well. I think that the characters were well developed and I think that especially Jodie Comer and Tom Hardy both did an absolutely incredible job in their respective roles. I feel like Austin Butler was a little bit underutilized in this movie. I think his his acting chops could have been shown a little bit better. I wish there would have been a little bit more closer for one character in particular, but I understand why. I wish the movie would have wrapped up a little bit more uh, un or ambiguously. Or no, yeah, no. I wish it would have. Oh man, my bro. Oh. I wish that it wasn't quite as ambiguous of an ending. I think it could have benefited from a better ending. But honestly, I would have to give this movie a seven out of ten overall. Next up, I watched Trap again, and I'm not gonna lie. Upon my second watching of this. I think it jumped the rankings. I think it went up to a 7.5 out of 10 for me just because I was able to catch more that I wasn't able to catch in my first viewing. I honestly enjoyed the movie more the second time even though there wasn't quite as much mystery and even though the punchy moments didn't punch quite as much in my second viewing, I think it was a better viewing experience overall the second time watching this. 7.5 out of 10 movie for me. Let us move on. Next up, I watched Family Camp. Christian movies tend to generally get crapped on on Letterboxd, and that is typically because Christian movies don't have the budget or the talent of a lot of movies. But I'm not gonna lie, I really enjoyed this movie. I did have a very good time with it. I think some of the comedy was cringe, but I think some of the comedy was also quite well done. I think the acting was good, especially against the budget that this film had. I do want to point out one thing. The beaver. If you haven't seen this movie, I'm gonna sound insane, but there's this beaver. Very, very integral to the plot of the movie, and for some reason, they chose to go with CGI 
on the beaver. And this is probably my least favorite part about, like when I think of this movie, when I think about the, the things I don't like about the movie, it's like two jokes that fall flat and are timed improperly and the beaver. Just use a puppet or use an animatronic. I get that the budget was low, but you just give it the beaver. I'm gonna give this two rankings. This was an 8.5 out of 10 for a family film, but as a Christian film, I would say this is probably a seven, seven and a half out of 10 because it's not incredibly preachy like a lot of movies, but it does come across as I would I would just personally find it hard to believe that the characters act like they do at some particular point. But it's still a great story. It's still a fun time. Next up, I watched Jim Henson Idea Man. This was a very, very fascinating and at a particular point kind of tragic look at an absolute creative genius. If you don't know who Jim Henson is, he's the guy that created the Muppets among a lot of other very, very popular films and shows from the 60s, 70s, and somewhat into the 80s. I would say this was a solid 7 out of 10 documentary overall. Next up, I watched Atomic Blonde, and I just want one question answered. How has Lorraine not died? from alcohol poisoning or black lung. Because I swear, in almost every scene, if she isn't beating up dudes on a staircase, she's drinking or smoking. And I swear, I want to re-watch this movie now because I want to count the times that she's not smoking or drink, like in ev almost every scene. But this, this for one, moved incredibly slow. I just could not get through basically like the opening of the movie. The movie opened relatively well and I think the movie also ended relatively well but the whole second act of this movie just felt so so dragging that it really, really lowered the score for me overall on this movie. Again, this is a 4 out of 10 for me personally. Next up, I watched Robots, and this was a 7 out of 10 kids film for me. I could say a lot in this review, I just want to focus on one thing. At a young age, Rodney was able to make a fully sentient robot capable of washing dishes, throwing plates, and flying around, in addition to throwing these plates and I would imagine carrying four to five times its body weight. He did this all at a young age. Rodney is going to take over this world. Next up, Avengers Endgame. Film bros may say this isn't cinema. Martin Scorsese may say this isn't cinema. But you know what? This may not be cinema, but dadgummit, it's peak fiction any way you look at it. This movie cemented itself at such a just solid dadgum position in my brain ever since watching this again. But you want to know something kind of crazy? I think I enjoyed this movie more than I did when it came out. I was a lie. I probably still enjoyed it more when it came out. This was an amazing movie. This is peak fiction. And if you haven't seen Endgame, Watch almost all Marvel prior Endgame. Watch Endgame. You will probably love it. Maybe. Again, if you're a film bro and you love Christopher Nolan's movies, Marvel probably isn't for you. But if you ever come after Endgame, if you ever come after one of the greatest pieces of fiction in modern history, I will, and I mean this, I will, destroy the oh yeah i completely forgot to say is a 9.5 out of 10 for me what do you want me to say it is amazing next up i watched prey i would give this a 7 out of 10. i thought the cgi was great the acting was even better and i would also like to propose an alternate title nature is scary i think that'd be a better title for this film Next up, I watched Jackpot, and from the way this movie started, I thought I was going to enjoy it more, but as you can probably tell from my tone and my voice, 
I did not like this movie. I thought it was cheesy. I thought it was ironic. And in my opinion, it disrespected the audience a whole lot. Like more so than other films I've seen recently, even other comedy films. I would give it a three out of 10 overall. It's probably in my top three least enjoyed movies that I've seen of this year so far. It was just, it was cringe and annoying and cringe. Man, I'm really, I'm, I'm knocking out those low rated movies for me. Uh, this year, Night Swim. The pool is the monster. This movie takes itself way too seriously. If this was a campy, fun horror movie, I think it'd be a whole lot higher. The pool is the monster. Next up, I watched Power Rangers, and a lot of people like to crap on this movie. I've seen a lot of people, I mean a lot of people give this thing half a star. But you know what? This movie may not have been perfect, but it was charming. It had some good fan service moments. It had some crap fan service moments. I thought it was fun. Definitely a fall off for Brian Cranston, but hey, we all hit rock bottom at some point. I'd give it a six out of 10 overall. Uh, oh, and um, Krispy Kreme definitely sponsored the final battle. Now you probably wanna go watch Power Rangers. I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. Next up, I watched Alien, and I am not gonna lie, this was a letdown, man. I was looking forward to this. I still liked it. I still think it was good. And I don't necessarily think it was horribly, horribly dated, but oh my gosh, it takes them so long to get to stuff actually happening. I, the first act, in my opinion, very, very boring. The whole second act, basically, the first half of this movie is incredibly boring, and the second half of this movie is relatively exciting with some really cool, extremely iconic moments. I would not call this movie great, but I also would not call this movie crap. I would personally give it a six out of 10 nowadays, but for, for its time, as far as movies that came out in 1979, I would give it a nine out of 10, honestly. Then I watched The Killer, which is John Woo's remake of his, I believe, either 70s or 80s action film of the same name. And up until the final battle in this movie, I would have given this movie an 8 out of 10, just because I really enjoyed it. I would legitimately give it an 8 out of 10 up until that final battle, because the movie does something that's very rare nowadays. It keeps one tone. It keeps the sincere like not making fun of the audience tone, it keeps that all the way up to the final battle. But then in the final battle, the final battle is almost cartoonish in my opinion. Like all of the fighting style up to that point in the movie is, you know, very serious, very gritty, very grounded. Um, all of the actors and actresses can fight in this movie as well. That is epic. To see like there weren't annoying cuts away well okay everybody except for one character in the final battle which was annoying <laughs> but this was a solid movie with some solid twists i enjoyed it and i would have given it an 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for that final battle the final battle unfortunately drops the film a whole point for me to a 7 out of 10 but let's move on to the next film Next up, I watched In Space with Markiplier, and this is not a film, it's an experience. And I only say that because it's on YouTube. I think that this could have worked as a film, potentially. Uh, I'm extremely excited to see what Markiplier does with Iron Lung. I'm really, really looking forward to that movie. This was a solid, fun, choose-your-own-adventure video experience, and I would have to give it an 8 out of 10 overall. Then I watched Shazam. And this was pretty good. It wasn't great. Yeah, it was campy at times. Yeah, it was a little bit ironic at times, almost annoyingly ironic. Like, oh, you're watching a superhero movie. Remember how you're watching a superhero movie? That was a little bit aggravating, but this was a fun film. This was a decent superhero movie. Not amazing, but not bad either. I had fun with this. I definitely think I enjoyed it a little bit more when I was a bit younger, when I could identify with the characters a little bit more, but this was overall a pretty solid 7 out of 10 film for me. 
And finally this month, I rounded it out with another M. Night Shyamalan movie, Glass. And this wasn't as good as I remember it. I remember the ending being a whole... Oh, I'm dying. <coughs> I remember the ending being a whole lot more conclusive and satisfying of this movie. It's very unsatisfying, <laughs> like, as far as M. Night Shyamalan goes, because M. Night Shyamalan has had some very low lows, I would put this at, of what I have seen, the middle of his filmography. It was a good movie, I'm not gonna spoil the ending, there's a very, very big twist ending of this, I would argue this is one of the bigger M. Night Shyamalan twist endings that I've seen out of any of his movies. I enjoyed it a decent bit, but definitely a lot less than I did upon my first watching. I would have to give this a solid 6.5 out of 10, because I don't think it's worthy of the 6. Like, I don't think... In looking at the other movies I gave 6 out of 10 this month, I don't think it deserves to be that low. But at the same time, I can't in good conscience give it a 7 out of 10, so I put it at 6.5 out of 10. But yeah, that's everything I watched in August 2024. Let me know what movies you watched, or some movies that you want me to check out for September. I am going to be doing a couple of different challenges in September. Like, I have one video planned where I exclusively let the Snapchat AI friend tell me what to watch. I'm not looking forward to that, but it's gonna be funny. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for watching, and if you want to see what I watched last month, you can click on that video right over here. I'll see you there.